Welcome everybody. What an exciting time. It's great to see so many amazing candidates, incumbents here. I want to thank Alianza first and foremost for the great work that you all do to help out our kids, whether it's in education or the environment, whether it's health care or day camp, whether it's civil rights issues. We appreciate working together with Alianza to community build. I know all of you have been working a while. The primary is coming up soon, so keep your energy up. It'll be over soon, and then we'll get a general election together where we'll all be able to present our visions to improve Central Florida. And in the Hispanic community, we, you know we have multiple different issues, like the kids, right? We always have to remember the children here. Let's give our kids a round of applause. That's our future president right there. The world was never changed by a shy kid, that's for sure. So we know whether it's education and making sure to have equal access, whether it's making sure that we have affordable housing, which is a key issue in the area, higher paying jobs, making sure that we can help with uh, a protecting our environment, clean air and water, uh, also making sure that we help out with issues affecting the Hispanic community directly, like our ESOL programs, like making sure we're working on immigration, like making sure we're helping our brothers and sisters uh, back in Puerto Rico, making sure that we use our power in Central Florida to help out Hispanics both at home and across Florida and across the world. So thank you everybody. Keep your energy up. You're going to do great. Present your vision. This is all about answering one question. It always has every election. How are you going to improve the lives of your future constituents? That's what we all want to know. Thank you, everybody. Welcome, and thank you, Alianza, for hosting this amazing event. Appreciate you all. Good evening, everyone. Buenas noches a todos. My name is Samuel Richard Santiago. And I'm Christina Robinson, Chief of Staff at Alianza. Thank you so much for being here with us this evening. And we want to welcome you to our first Friday meet the candidates and elected officials. Thank you all so much for coming here. We're having this important event ahead of the primaries that are happening on August 23rd. And we really thank you for being here, all of the candidates, all of the elected officials, and most importantly, all of the voters who are here trying to find out who they're gonna be voting for. Um, we wanna give a very special thank you to Osvaldo Quesada Quartet. Um, and his son over there, and um, Emmanuel Davila, right? Thank you so much, beautiful music. Um, we also want to thank, say thank you to Danny Ramos um, from Arte Mundial Museum Gallery, um, to Motor Trend Certified Vehicles and their staff for this wonderful space, for allowing us to use this space this evening and, and let us host this event, thank you so much. Um, throughout the evening, we invite the public to go around and visit the tables and get to know your candidates and elected officials. Um, there is soda and water for sale right around this corner. Um, there are also, um, we have light bites thanks to Magic Creations and um, beautiful uh, floral arrangements by Kukanan. So thank you so much, Caro. And before we begin, we actually want to point out the exits. The, there's an exit in the back past the, the restroom doors. There's an exit to the right past the cubicle offices. And there's also an exit in the rear left of the showroom through the swinging doors. Make sure to know where the exit is. You can also follow the red exit signs on the ceiling. Thank you, someone. Um, without uh, further ado, we'll go ahead and introduce Marcos Vilar, Executive Director of Alianza for Progress. Muy buenas noches. Good evening. If people could please come and sit in the front so that we can hear the speakers. We are going to be listening from school board members, judge candidates, uh, state representatives, county commissioners, city commissioners. We want to welcome everybody here. Um, I want to recognize also this beautiful mural here that's behind us. As, as you all know, a few years ago, we suffered a huge tragedy here in Orlando. And just a few days ago, 
uh, on my own street, Lake District Lane, a family of five people was found dead in their home. And it was five people who died at the hands of a firearm, murder-suicide. It's shocking when those things happen so close to home. And the issue of gun, gun violence and reducing gun violence is an important issue. And I, uh, and I want to make a special call to everybody in the room here tonight to think about, you are, you are the leaders of this community, you're striving to find places in this community, how do we make our community safer? And how do we really, really take on the serious problem of high level weapons, weapons that are military grade, being in the streets? That is not acceptable and no, no, that, that, if you're for the police, how could you be for ha having people hold military grade levels of uh, guns in your home? or in your streets. So I would like to invite everybody to think about this serious issue and let's give just a small little moment of silence for all of those people who, are, who have been uh, lost due to gun violence. Thank you. So tonight's event is the first time that we do something like this as Alianza. We are an organization that's dedicated to building leadership in the Latino and Puerto Rican community, but not isolated from the rest of the community that we live in. We live in a community that has African Americans, has Anglos, has people who've lived here many years, and have people who've recently moved in from different places. And what we've learned throughout our schools and our education system is that we live in a democracy that's very precious and that democracy is based on being able to talk with each other even when we have difference of opinions and so tonight we've invited Republicans we've invited independents we invited Democrats to come here and talk about what they stand for as candidates tonight and I don't want to talk too much because it's really their night so I will once again welcome everybody to the to the floor thank you for coming thank you for all the different elected officials and the campaigns that are here tonight it's a beautiful thing to see everyone here. I know that some of you are competing or vying against each other, but this is a night for us to all celebrate our democracy and share our ideas. Thank you all very much. Thank, thank you so much, Marcos, and thank you for your leadership. And as he said, you know, gun violence prevention is a really important issue here in our community and across the country. Uh, we invited all of the candidates uh, to be here tonight. Unfortunately, some of the candidates could not make it due to other constraints. The speakers in our program have registered to speak today previously ahead of time. Um, and we have had a uh, limited amount of spots available and they filled up quickly. And I wanted to name that as we're gonna start having some of these candidates come up. Today we have candidates from different parties, from different backgrounds, and that demonstrates the importance of talking to the community ahead of these primaries. Uh, all of the candidates will have an opportunity to, to give a message to the community today, so you'll hear from them, and then they will have basically a maximum of three minutes to address the public, and we will announce each section based on what people are running for. So if you're running for Congress, you go together, if you're running for the legislature, you go together, school board, etc., etc., and they'll be broken down into sections. Thank you, Samuel. Yeah, once we call um, your group, um, you see where Zulma Velez is standing here? She's our um, interim executive director for Alianza Center. Um, in front of these four chairs, so when we call your section, you'll come and you'll take a seat here next to her, and then um, we'll call you to come on stage. Um, just a couple rules to keep in mind. Um, the timer is going to start at the moment that the candidate begins to speak at two minutes and 45 seconds. The music volume will start to go up slowly to let you know that um, you have uh, 15 seconds left. And then once the timer reaches three minutes, the volume, the music volume will go up um, higher um, and the microphone will be turned off and your time will be up. Um, and then we ask that you please return to your original seat in the audience at that time. Please um, be mindful to stay within your allotted um, speaking time. Um, to allow everyone who has registered the opportunity to speak. We have a lot of speakers and we don't have a lot of time, so we want to make sure that everyone gets an opportunity to speak. You can access the agenda in the program um, through the QR code that is at the entrance. 
um, so you can see all of the candidates' names and what they are running for. Uh, we're, go we're going to get started with actually uh, the judges. So if all of the candidates for a judge position can make their way up here by the blue ba banner, uh, we're going to get started with those. So if you're a candidate for judge in any of the circuits uh, locally, please make your way to the stage. Or if you're a representative of their campaign. And uh, for the different judges candidates, we have Allison Kiristis, Faye Pappas, Michael Stewart, and Aldo Bartoloni. Aldo. But if you're Allison Kirister, Faye Pappas, or Michael Stewart, uh, this is your time to speak, so please make your way to the stage. Yeah, and just find the blue banner over here on this side. Okay, do we have um, Allison and Michael Stewart here with us tonight? Come on over. Let's go ahead and get started then. So um, you can go ahead and go on up to the stage. Um, this is Faye um, Pappas, and she's running for Circuit Judge, um, 9th Judicial District. Hello. Thank you all. Hello. Good evening. My name again is Faye Olga Pappas, and I'm proud to say I'm running in my home circuit of Orange and Osceola County. I'm the hometown girl in this race, born and raised in Orlando and I'd be honored to have your vote. My parents, like so many of the parents and people here tonight, are first-generation Americans, and that has enriched how I've lived my life and my desire to give back. Currently, I'm a trial lawyer of law firm of Bailey Fisher, where I represent real people against corporations to help them rebuild their lives every day. But, after the, but in addition to the 10 years of doing that, before I ever became a lawyer, I have a background in civil rights work as a two-time Florida Bar Public Service Fellow with Southern Legal Counsel, Civil Rights Firm in Gainesville, Florida, and our Legal Aid Society here in downtown Orlando, where I help people stay in their homes, stay in this country, and leave abusive relationships. So again, that is the background that I bring to the bench. I'm running because I believe that our course should be for people not for political agendas, like so many of you here tonight. We have to stand up for our community and what is in its best interest. So I say to you, if you believe in the same things, vote for Faye Olga Pappas, August 23rd, and early voting starts on Monday, August 8th. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you so, thank you so much for opening up. Please, as candidates are speaking, if you can please lower your voice so we can all hear them, that'd be great. And now we're gonna welcome uh, Michael Stewart. Well, thank you, everyone. My name's Michael Stewart, and I'm running for Circuit Court Judge here in the Ninth Judicial Circuit. All of Orange and all of Osceola County is covered by that district. I am running for judge because I witnessed firsthand inequities in our justice system. When I was at the Public Defender's Office, I firsthand witnessed how people who were perceived as not having power or not having money were treated in our justice system. And if you want to make it better, you have to put yourself out there and do something about it to help make things better. And I believe I'm the most qualified person for this race because I'm the only one that has practiced civil and criminal as an attorney in the circuit court level. I've tried more trials than my opponent, and I'm the only person who is not, nor have I ever been, a member of the Federalist Society. So on or before August 23rd, vote Michael Stewart for Circuit Court Judge and choose still. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. Um, and I just wanted to point out that Faye and Michael are running in um, two different districts. They are not running against each other. 
Um, okay, let's move on to Orange County School Board. So if I could have my Orange County School Board candidates please come up to the stage. Demencio Barton, Angie Gallo, Heather Ashby, Maria Salamanca, and Susan Peña. Okay, let's get started with the next part and you can go ahead and take the stage. Hello everybody, I'm Demencio Barton and I am one of the Orange County School Board Chair. I am a native of Florida. I was born and raised in Central Florida. My beautiful wife with that gold on is right there holding the camera right there. And that's my son with the cowboy hat because we do ride horses and all of that kind of fun stuff. Now, um, why am I running and who am I? I'm an engineer. I have um, an engineer, <clears throat> excuse me, I graduated from the University of South Florida uh, with a chemical engineering degree uh, in process engineering and in thermodynamics. I have been on sound boards for the nation with green construction and I've also sat for the state of Florida also in likewise. What got me for running for school board is simply this. I have been pro-family since I was a kid. Say this with me. Family is family. Family is not politics. We must remember that family is the most important, the most important foundation of our whole culture. If we in this nation want to succeed, our every, each and every family, I don't care what your ethnicity is, I don't care what your financial state is, your family must succeed. Moms, dads, children, our unity in our homes is what makes this nation great. This nation is not great without you and me and our children becoming all that we can be. And that is what I want to bring to our county. I'm not one for division. I want a level playing field for every person. I want you to know, just like everyone else, that your kids will go to school and be educated. And when they come out, you will be proud to have said your child was educated there. My name is Demencio Barton. My website's at www.demenciobarton.com. Please remember to vote and to support. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Barton. Angie Gallo. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Angie Gallo, and I am running for school board in District 1. For those of you who do, do not know where District 1 is, it is the east side of Orlando. My district starts in Cimarron, goes over to Seminole County, down to Brevard, and over to Osceola. So I have a very large geographical area, um, but I represent 23 schools. I was born and raised in Central Florida. I have been married for 28 years to my husband, who's back there taking a picture of me as we speak. Um, I have two beautiful girls that graduated from OCPS schools. We raised them in East Orange County. Um, I'm a native Floridian. So I am running for a second term for school board because there's still a lot of work to be done. We have, we have um, gaps that need to be shortened. We, we have a lot of learning loss due to the COVID. We have discipline issues due to the COVID. We have a lot of problems and a lot of challenges that face us over the next four years. And I'm committed to making sure that every child is successful, that every child reaches their full potential, and that every child is ready when they graduate from the OCPS school. I'm a big believer in career and technical education. I don't think that every child needs to go to college. I think they can have a really good career coming right out of an OCPS school. So please remember Angie Gallo. My website's www.voteangiegallo.com. And please vote on or before August 23rd. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Angie. Heather Ashby. Good evening. My name is Heather Ashby, and I am running for District 2 in Orange County. My district runs in from the Colonial, kind of the south part, east of the airport, encompasses areas like Lee Vista, Lake Nona, um, 
Dean Curry Ford. Um, my background is education. I have been in education for 25 years. I started in the classroom, teaching United States history in middle school. I moved to high school where I taught everything from US history to sociology to AP psychology. At that time I went back and I loved mental health and I got a master's degree in mental health counseling and marriage and family counseling. And I've been a school counselor in OCPS for over 10 years. What I wanna do on the school board is really serve our total child. Right now, we have students who are suffering. They have had life ripped from them during a global pandemic. They've been isolated, they've had learning losses, and they've lost a lot of life opportunities. And that has resulted in higher levels of anxiety, depression, and now they're coming back to our schools. And this year is gonna look a lot more normal. But we need to serve them and we need to make sure that we're giving them the opportunities that they've missed. And so I'm a huge proponent for opportunities for all of our students. As a high school counselor, I work with students every day talking about their futures, making sure that they are taking the right steps so that they have the, the line set up for them when they graduate. And whether that's going to college, whether that's using one of our career and technical programs and going straight into the workforce, my big belief is that there are no limitations. Whatever your dreams are, we need to lay out a path so you can be successful. And that's what I wanna do. I wanna bring that experience, I wanna bring that know-how to the school board. So on or before August 23rd, I would really appreciate your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Maria Salamanca. Hello, buenos días. Me llamo Maria Salamanca. Yo soy candidata para el Distrito 2. So I'm District 2 candidate for school board as well. Uh, I am a product of OCPS. Yo fui estudiante de 12 años acá en Conway, uh, Discovery, Avalon, Timber Creek. Uh, vengo de la perspectiva del estudiante y lo que pasa en nuestros salones todos los días, de lunes a viernes por 12 años. Um, yo Muy acá, soy, soy colombiana, cuando ella tenía siete años, mis papás empezaron, ellos trabajaban mucho, y yo como estudiante era mi responsabilidad de saber cómo, cómo, en qué clases tenía que estar, con qué maestros tenía que hablar, y navegar un sistema muy complejo. Y este sistema muy complejo empezó a ser demystified por Joana López, que fue la primera latina que nos ha representado en el, en el distrito escolar, Joanna me está apoyando en esta elección. Um, she's uh, supporting me because we must continue this. Uh, muchas cosas están cambiando en, la, en Tallahassee, eh, de cómo podemos enseñar a nuestros hijos, eh, hay mucho de, de qué libros pueden leer. Eh, en realidad hay muchos problemas de, de Tallahassee que nos está afectando a nuestra comunidad. Um, and many times a lot of that is being targeted against us. Tenemos que uh, make sure que tenemos una voz latina en el distrito escolar. Uh, después de que Joana se va a la house y la vamos a apoyar, uh, tenemos que mantener voces latinas. ¿Por qué? Porque ahorita el distrito cambió de que necesitas para que a tu hijo si algo le pasa en el colegio y se raspa algo, tú tienes que firmar una forma al principio del año y si no firmas esa forma, no te lo van a tratar. Se, se rompió el brazo, necesitan band-aid, you're not going to get that support. And you know what? Porque la forma que acabamos de sacar en el distrito está solo en inglés. Entonces, nuestro distrito, que es 40% latino, does not have the forms that gives our students first aid if they get sick, right? So we need to make sure that we have someone on the school board thinking about this every single day. Uh, I hope to be that voice. I hope you let me be that voice. Uh, and we must prepare our students. You know, I went to the uh, University of Berkeley. I was the creator of the Super Scholars Initiative. That's where Samuel, which you know there. We make sure that our students, those of color, those of low income, those who are not that, can go to Harvard, Princeton, Stanford, and that we are prepared. Uh, I am that. My background is in finance. I know how to run money really well. I've been a student. I have the last two school board members who held this seat endorsing me. Um, and I hope that you guys trust me uh, to be that representative for you. So, muchísimas gracias. Un placer. Gracias, Maria. Susan Peña. Hola, mi gente. 
yo, no, honestamente, que yo no necesito micrófono, ¿verdad? Pero, pero lo voy a usar hoy, ¿ok? Buena, hola. Mi nombre es Susan Marie Peña. Vengo a ustedes hoy como educadora y madre. He sido educadora en el campo de la educación de grado K a 12 y educación universidad, universitaria por más de 20 años. Comencé mi carrera en educación como maestra voluntaria y maestra sustituta. Hasta convertirme en maestra de salón de clase, trabajando con estudiantes con habilidades excepcionales, así como estudiantes de ISO. Mi experiencia abarca desde maestra hasta entrenadora de instrucción, desde asistente principal hasta administradora de distrito en escuelas de título 1. Yo no soy política, soy educadora, madre trabajadora y defensora de todos los estudiantes. Me enorgullece haber aportado una beca multimillonaria a las escuelas públicas del Condado Orange para brindar desarrollo profesional y 18 créditos posgraduados gratuitos a maestros trabajando con estudiantes bilingües en todo el distrito. Pero para mí, mi trabajo no termina ahí, eh, ya que sigo abogando por los estudiantes, sus familias y educadores a nivel estatal, como la presidenta electa de la Asociación de Educación Bilingüe de la Florida, mejor conocido como FABE. Además, Sigo trabajando en los salones de clase. Sí, créanlo o no, yo todavía trabajo en los salones de clase con los maestros. Eso es lo que estaba haciendo hasta el miércoles. ¿Okay? Trabajando a nivel nacional. Mi pasión por trabajar con los estudiantes, sus familias y educadores no es algo que es adoptado simple y llanamente por propósitos de campaña. Esto es algo que está en el centro de quién soy yo. I am Suzanne Marie Peña a working mom, an education expert, and an advocate for all students. Don't forget to vote for me on or before August 23rd. Gracias. Thank you so much to all of our school board candidates in Orange County. Let's give it up for their school board candidates in Orange County. We wanted to take this moment also to recognize Wes Hodge, who is here in the audience, and he is the chairman of the Orange County Democratic Executive Committee. Thank you so much for being here. And now we're going to welcome our candidates for the Osceola County School Board. We have two, and we'll start with Ms. Terry Castillo from Hi, District Mr. 1, and then we'll have both of us. Terry Castillo, everybody. Hola, hola, familia, ¿cómo estamos? Yeah. Hey! So I'm Terry Castillo, and I am running for re-election of Osceola County School Board District 1. District 1, if you don't know, goes through from the loop all the way through Champions Gate. So if you do not live in District 1, but you have friends who do, tell them to vote for Terry Castillo. But I'm not telling you to vote for Terry Castillo because I'm here and because I'm nice. I'm going to tell you why I should um, be the next, I should continue my, my role in the Osceola County School Board. In 2018, I ran a campaign with $6,000 that everyone thought I was going to lose. And I didn't lose because I worked and I worked and I knocked on every single door to make sure that everybody knew that I had a passion for education. And I did win that campaign. During the time that I have been on the school board, I have not sat down and I have not stopped earning your votes every single day. I am proud of the work that we have done on behalf of our community. Since joining the school board, I have joined not only fights locally in Osceola County, but also fights beyond Osceola County through Tallahassee and through the federal government. I am proud to have supported and advocated for funding for mental health, an accountability-based um, system that involves not only the folks in Tallahassee, but the educators who are in the classrooms every single day and know what is happening with our students. 
I am proud to have advocated on behalf of our students to increase our base student allocation. And I am proud to have supported a Grow Your Own program, which Osceola County already has, to implement all over the, the state of Florida. Since my election, I have also helped to implement a one-to-one -one district in Osceola County. Osceola County used to have to compete with Orange because all of their students had computers and our students, but that is no longer the case. We were able to bring computers to all of our students in Osceola County. We've also worked directly with students to implement a system of reporting sexual harassment. And that came along from the advocacy of students. I don't just work for myself. When people bring me problems, I work with them to solve them. And we've also implemented a cybersecurity training program for our staff. We know that there's still work to do, a lot of work to do, and I am not done yet. We want to make sure that the students in Osceola County are able to compete in the 21st century job market through innovation, strategy, intellect, and most importantly, compassionate leadership. So if you want to know more about my campaign, I'm right over there. We can chat about education, which is my number one passion, and I would love to continue to earn your vote starting on August through August 23rd. Thank you. I am the first one to get the music. I love that. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Castillo. Now welcome Mr. Wolfenseca, who's running for District 4 in Osceola County. Thank you, thank you. I want to start by saying thank you, Alianza, for putting this amazing event on. Thank you for everyone who came out to show up and show support. That's, that's a, a great thing that you're doing here. I'm known as Coach Will Fonseca because I coach locally in the, in the Kissimmee and the St. Cloud area. I mentor the youth at all levels, at the younger age, the high school level, and with Special Olympics. I'm someone who leads from the heart and step up for when it's needed. What makes a great elected official? Someone who's worked in the community. I had this conversation with my good friend Felix Ortiz, Jeanette Martinez, Jackie Espinoza, and we said someone who's been working in the community is key to the right person for any position, especially for school board. I've worked with the youth, and I, can, I hope to continue to work for the youth. I'm looking to do things that are right for the teachers and the staff that work the closest for, with the students. They need to feel that, that the district is on their side and not on the opposite side. We need to do what's right for our students with safety, keeping the SROs in, in the school, and making sure that we have continued audits and that there's no lapse in, in security at our schools. Lastly, for today, I want to talk about no high school student should leave high school without having any idea of what they're going to do next. I see a lot of that as a coach and mentor. A lot of high schoolers don't know what they're going to do. So what can we do to help that? And that's work with our local businesses, implement more internships. Senior year should look a little bit different than what it does now. And that's what I'm looking to do as Coach Will Fonseca runs in Osceola County District 4. I hope to have your support. Um, talk to me over there if you have any more questions. Thank you, God bless. Thank you so much, Mr. Fonseca. Okay, now um, if I can have Orange County Commission um, candidate, Maribel Gomez Cordero. Buenas tardes a todos, Puerto Rico, hispano, venezolano, colombiano, ecuatoriano, I mean, todos mis amigos, familia, los amo. Good evening, everyone. I'm Commissioner Maribel Gomez Cordero, Orange County, District 4, and it's an honor for me to be here today. Es un honor para mí estar aquí. Hola. Es un honor para mí estar aquí con ustedes. Me encanta todo esto, pero ustedes saben qué es lo que más que me gusta. I love to be here, but you know what the best? knowing you, hugging you, kissing you, and being with you. That's the best of all of these events. So thank you for inviting me. I want to say that I am for re-election. August 23rd, we already started, well, the um, vote by mail, and then we will start the early voting on Monday, August 8th. But, you know, I'm here whenever, whatever you need. It's District 4, that's the east side of Orange County, which is, Waterford Lake, Avalon Park, Alafaya, 44, Dean Road, um, a little bit of Narcusi, Livista, Lake Nona, South Chase, Meadowood, Weatherby, 
all that OBT up to Central Parkway. Before I had Florida Mall, but now it's only up to Central Florida Parkway. So, esas son mis zonas del Distrito 4. Gracias por invitarme. And by the way, tomorrow I have a back to school in Meadowood um, Recreational Center from 11 to 2. If you have kids and you need book bags and school supplies, you can go by and and you can go and meet me and let's have fun and let's, you know, spend time together. So, gracias. Mañana tengo un book bag para todos nuestros niños en el Southeast, que es el Meadowood Recreational Center, para que usted pueda llevar sus niños y si usted quiere ir para verme y hablar conmigo, pues también venga. Eh, lo quiero mucho, Dios me lo bendiga, God bless you all, and let's continue having fun. Thank you, thank you so much, Commissioner. And now, we'll welcome our candidates for the Osceola County Commission, running in District 4, Jackie Espinosa. Good evening, everyone. Whoa, that was loud. Didn't expect that. Usually my voice doesn't project as well because it's a lower tone voice, but thank you all for being here. I look at these events more than a political event. As much as we've worked in the community, these are like family reunions because we know so many people out there. Doing this and running for office in Osceola County is because I've lived in Florida for over 30 years. I've raised my children here, my two beautiful daughters, and I'm now helping raise my two beautiful granddaughters. I've been married to that cutie over there for over 30 years, and we <laughs> so when we run for office, the whole family runs for office, right? That's kind of how it is, because you need a team behind you, and I have the best team in Central Florida, because my family is amazing. And that's why I do what I do, because they're my motor. Ellos son mi norte. La familia es la que te lleva a hacer estas locuras de meterse en lo que es política. I don't come before you as a Democrat or as a politician. I come before you as a businesswoman, a mom, and a grandma. And I come before you as someone that understands the dynamic change in Osceola County. Osceola and Orange are quite different. Osceola has grown exponentially and more than 64% in our district are Hispanic. With that, I just feel that the people that are currently representing us don't understand the diversity that we live day in and day out. My call to you is that the Latinos, they say we don't vote. If we're here today, it's because we care, because our voice needs to be heard. So my call to action is tell 10 people you know that are Latinos and tell them that we need their voice starting Monday when early voting begins. Our voice needs to be heard so that the needs could be met. And that is one of the reasons I'm running because we've learned, my background is in finance, it's all I've ever done for 31 years and we own several businesses in Osceola County. So we get the opportunity to talk to many people and learn about their needs. We understand the needs that face today's world. We understand the rising cost of just living. So to us, it's important to be that voice. The slogan to my campaign is a voice for all. Because when you walk into, and we own several restaurants, but when you walk into my restaurant, I don't ask you, are you a Democrat? Are you a Republican? I say, come on in, let's have a cup of coffee and let's work together. And that's how we change community, working together. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jackie. To economic policy reform for tourist destinations, you should vote for Kelly Martinez Semra. I am a PhD of tourism and hospitality management. I'm a UCF professor. I have been employed all over the world to look at specifically at tourist development tax to ensure that it comes back to the people, back to the community. The incumbent is proposing to raise your sales tax. We do not need to raise the sales tax to fund our transit. What we need to do is restructure the tourist development tax so that we can use that as a, a permanent funding mechanism for our mass transit and improving our roads. We do not need to raise money on people. Right now is the worst time to talk about raising taxes. We have 
the worst inflation in 40 years. We have overdevelopment where people are sitting in gridlock traffic. We have gas prices that are soaring, rent prices that are going up. Now is not the time that we talk about raising our taxes on our people. Now is the time that we start talking about the resources that we have. Our number one economic resource is tourism. We get approximately 76 million tourists a day. Right now, the incumbent funnels that money back into the private industry. That money needs to come out to us. It's not the private businesses that sit with tourists in gridlock traffic. It's not the private businesses that have the tourists using our natural resources, like our water. It is the citizens, the residents of Orange County. I am from the people. I am for the people. I have been advocating for aggressive policy change in Orange County for more than a decade. Please vote by August 23rd. All registered voters, including not NPAs and independents, can vote by the August 23rd election. Please remember to vote. If you want more of the same, the incumbent is your answer. If you want positive change and an improved quality of life, Dr. Kelly Sumran is your vote. Thank you. And on that point, it's very important to point out that in these primary elections, all people can vote, all registered voters can vote. Even if you're an MPA, you can go and you can vote for Orange County School Board, Osceola County School Board. You could also go vote for the county commissioner. And as, you, and as Kelly mentioned, you could also vote for, uh, for mayor. And now, uh, I believe we had another candidate, and this is Ms. Tony Staff, uh, candidate for Orange County Mayor. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tony Sad. I'm a 25-year Army veteran, Colonel retired. Sir, thank you for your service. I've served in every major conflict in the last three decades in this country. Operation Desert Shield, Operation Iraqi Freedom, and I've also commanded at the battalion and company level. I've flown Blackhawks for 22 years, and I've seen some things. And I'm telling you now that our country and our county needs leadership. We need people that are going to take care of people. Right now, we don't have that. What we have are leaders that are politicians, that are after special interests, and that are after their own self-advancement. The only reason I'm running is because I'm in fear of my country. I was in fear one year ago when I watched 13 of our soldiers get killed for no reason in Afghanistan. I'm running because we have right now a government that is more satisfied with taking care of their own personal interests than our own. Now we're taxpayers and we're in a county that's under a crisis, ladies and gentlemen. And that crisis runs the gamut. It runs the gamut, as Kelly said. But what I'm most concerned about in our county is accountability. Accountability. When is someone going to be accountable for the things that they've done? Why are we right now facing a housing crisis in this county? We're facing it because the incumbent that is in charge right now knew about it three and a half years ago and done nothing about it. Nothing. What we need right now are additional units in this county. We need to start building. We need to put our private sector together and start getting busy on getting some of these dilapidated buildings in, into shape and having low income housing and also having our first time buyers, new, new husbands and wives, make that first investment, right? That's what we need. We need to bring America back into this county. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to take care of you. I know how to do that. I took care of people during a lot of very hard times. I want to do that for our county. The only reason I'm running is for that reason, not fortune, not fame. I'm 61 years old, and I'm doing this because I'm worried about my country. I want your vote. Please go to TonySabForMayor.com, look me up. I'm right over there. I enjoy talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Sapp. We need to make a quick adjustment to the program. We're going to go ahead and um, invite the um, United States representatives to come over here, please, to the stage. Um, these are the individuals who would like to represent you in Congress. Um, so we are going to start with U.S. Representative, um, the District 10, 
candidates. So if I could please have Maxwell Frost, Alan Grayson, Jack Aikenbeck, maybe? And Randolph Racy. We're going to go ahead and get started with Maxwell Frost. How's everybody doing? All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Maxwell Alejandro Frost, and I'm honored to be standing before you today as an organizer, as an advocate, and a candidate for Congress here in Florida's 10th Congressional District. Uh, the place I was born and raised in. And you know, usually at these type of things, I'll start off with telling my own story, but today I want to tell the story of my abuela, Yeya, uh, who came here from Cuba during the freedom flights in the late 1960s. It was, ba yeah. it was back in March where I was actually doing some fundraising and I got a call from my mother that my grandma, Yeya, who was 97 years old, was in the hospital. I had to stop all the fundraising and, and rush right over, obviously. She, kind of raised me for the first two years of my life. And when I got there, she was on this, the BiPAP machine. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And when I got there, the doctor was going through all the procedures my family couldn't afford and said essentially that she couldn't live without the machine. And so either way, we decided to take her off of it so she could spend the last few hours with her family. And we were talking through her life and everything that she had been through. And we were told that she would have four hours to live. Well, it started to get around 1 a.m. and me and my family started looking at each other like, she's still here. And then hours became days, days became weeks, and my grandma's still with us to this day, many months later. That's what happens when all you eat is arroz con pollo y salmón every day. I mean, you live to 97. But I want to tell her story because she came here with no money in her pocket, worked three jobs getting paid $1.50 an hour in Hialeah putting her hands and her arms in vats of chemicals to create lamps so that way my mom could grow up to become a school teacher. My mom has been a school teacher for the last 30 years and actually retires this year. And she went through all of that just to have a better life for her kids. And I think a lot of times as immigrants, immigrant families, we wear that as a badge of honor. Right? My mom, my dad, my grandma, my, my abuela, they came here with nothing and struggled and now look at us. We should be happy about the, the, what the strength that they have. But on top of that, we have to recognize that they shouldn't have needed that type of strength in the first place. When people come here and they have to subjugate themselves to that type of work for that little money, that's a policy failure. And so I'm running for Congress because I believe in a better world. I believe that my grandma, Yeya, deserved better when she came here from Cuba. I believe that my mother deserved better. I believe that I deserve better and believe that every single one of us deserves more, that no matter who you are, you deserve health care, affordable housing, and all these things by virtue of being a human being. Again, y'all, my name is Maxwell Alejandro Franz. Vamos a luchar por justicia por todos. Thank you so much. Let's do it. Thank you so much, Maxwell. Now we'll hear from Jeff Boone. Thank you. Thank you. How's everybody doing tonight? First thing I'd like to do is tell you a little bit about myself and my family before I go into my background. Uh, I am the stepson of a Puerto Rican stepmother, and I'm here with my wife, Ada Malave Boone who's first generation Puerto Rican American. She's the 12th child. We have over 70 nieces and nephews. They call me Tio. I have one niece, so we had it back 71. And we know the hard work that it takes because we came all the way from Harlem and Brooklyn to come to Hunters Creek and be here in Orlando. And in terms of my background, I'm a three-time former student government president, first African American, including Colgate University. I have a background in business and finance, majors in economics and political science, management, marketing, and finance at Colgate and New York University. 
and we married young. And with a young child, I decided to go back to grad school at night. At night, after work, in banking on Wall Street with a wife, and many times I'd come out of school at night and she'd be standing right outside the door with the baby on board in the car. And that's how we worked in tandem for 32 years. And that same work that we've done together as a family and working hard for our family, we will work hard for you, your families, and your children. I'll leverage my background in bank banking and finance for economic development for our community. I want to make sure that we can find ways for government and business to work together to help educate, train, employ, house our community members. We need everything from early childhood education all the way to free community college. In between, recurring teachers' raises and after school programs for tutoring. We want the kids to stay in school. Staying in school, get involved in extracurricular activities, high grades, it will get you into college. That is the message I will come home from college and go to every school and speak to students about. And then in addition to that, we need affordable rents. Finding ways that we can give tax incentives to renters for low income sensitive housing. Same way sex and eight, but span the bandwidth from $15 to $16.50 to a little bit wider so more people can afford it. We also need to reduce the tax rate for small businesses, women and minority owned businesses, and tax incentives for companies creating jobs, investing in our communities, and hiring local residents. And then I also want to improve the police community relations because I'm a benefactor of that in the Harlem Police Athletic League that was started by my father and my uncle who was a cop. And it kept many kids off of the streets and we were the first generations in our family to go to college and integrated college. And the same work I want to do for my family, I want to do for you. So if you want results soon, vote Jeff Boo. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Boone. Jack, you can back. Hey, everybody. Oh, that's very loud. Uh, so my name's Jack Achenbach, and I've met a lot of you tonight. But for those of you who don't know me, I'm a registered dietitian, and I currently work with the Osceola County School District. And that means I provide health and wellness activities across the entire school district. Before that, I was a chef, and I know all of you like to eat. So. Make sure you come and meet me, and I might hook you up with some good food. But to be honest with you, coming up here and talking with all of you is really nerve-wracking for me. This whole experience running for office has been incredibly, incredibly uh, difficult. But I do it because I've realized that there's a lot of problems in our, in our nation. And I've realized that there's a lot of people in office who aren't listening to the people, a lot of people in office who only serve their special interests. Over the last 30 years, we have problems that have not been solved, whether it's immigration, whether it's student loan reform, whether it's the fight against drugs, right? legalizing marijuana. There's so many people in jail for nonviolent offenses. But no one is listening. No one is solving these solutions. Every two years, every four years, we have these same conversations. But what ends up happening? We vote for the same thing, and the people ignore us. So I'm putting myself in front of these people who don't listen to you to put up a fight against them, to finally advocate on what you believe in. So I encourage you to come by my table, talk to me. We have 32 policies on our website. We're fighting for you. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much to our candidates for Congressional District 10. Now we'll have a candidate for Congressional District 9, Adianis Morales, running for Congressional District 9. Good evening, everyone. My name is Avianis Morales, and I am originally from Puerto Rico. And I love what each candidate has been saying here today, because we work for the people. We work for our community. And it doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter your political affiliation. We should love each other. I am a pastor, and that is easier for me to transition between when people talk about political parties, because we're called to love each other and respect each other. With that said, I've been living here in Central Florida for 17 years, and I've been serving my community for those 17 years. I decided to run for Congress because in Osceola County, we have big needs. We have a problem with um, transit. We have big, big um, tapones, como decimos en español. Sometimes it takes you 45 minutes to an hour to get 
just drive three miles. And that is an infrastructure problem, and we need to solve that. Everybody is moving to Central Florida. People love Kissimmee. Why? Because we are great people, because we have great accommodations, and because we can love people well. My other point here is um, I am fighting. I've been fighting in the school boards for two years now. There's so many things that are coming against our children. I believe in the Parental Bill of Rights. Florida was one of the first states in the nation to have the Parental Bill of Rights. So one of my main targets when I get to Congress is to pass a bill that every state will have a Parental Bill of Rights. The kids do not belong to the government. Kids don't belong to schools. Kids don't belong even to churches. Kids belong to parents. As a parent, that is your responsibility to make sure that your children receive information when they're ready for it. I also believe that we need to bring back our economy. And to do so, we need to open our pipelines. That is the, the, the soul of the United States. We can be energy independent. And I also believe that we need to turn to God again. We need to bring God back again into our schools and everything we do. Because this nation was created under one nation under God. It is, important, it is very important that we know our constitution and that we know our constitution, constitutional rights. Because as citizens of this great nation where everyone will love to live here and many people put their lives in danger as we're seeing now at the border, which we have a big crisis, people know that in America you can fulfill your dreams. So please vote Adelis Morales for Congress, Osceola County, District 9, that encompasses all Osceola County, part of Polk County, and part of Orange County. My website is www.moralesforcongress.com. You will know more about me, and please vote. Make sure you exercise your right to vote. Many blessings, and thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Morales. Uh, we will now hear form from District 8 candidates for Congress. If you could please come to the stage, Danielle Dodge and Joanne Terry. Okay, we'll go ahead and start with Danielle Dodge. Go ahead. Hopefully I don't get in trouble for that. Uh, my name is actually Danelle Dodge, and I'm very happy to be here tonight. I am running for Florida's 8th Congressional District. Uh, buenos noches. I'm going to throw that out there. Try to practice my Spanish a little bit. Um, I am running for Congress because I am a citizen for change. I'm not a politician. Um, I'm a mom of four grown uh, kids and a quirky dog, and I'm a small business owner of an educational technology company. I, my experience is in education and advocacy. I was a childbirth educator and a doula for a number of years, and I've always felt um, that it's such a privilege to be part of uh, people's most personal experience of having a baby and having that trust. I feel compelled to run at this time because I do feel that District 8 is flippable. Our current representative, um, is a Trump supporter who votes to um, overturn elections, and that is unacceptable in democracy. We do have to stand up and stand strong for our rights, and we need to be do that together. We're seeing so much um, great things that are starting to happen with our current um, things that are happening in government, and I'm excited to have the opportunity to uh, work with the current administration to make these changes. Um, I really feel that we can, together, um, make the change that needs to happen. Um, as an advocate, I want to bring constituent services to our district. Our current representative gave back a million dollars to the uh, Treasury. So we need to bring our tax dollars to our district for resources. We can have a grant advisor. We can have someone to help us with veteran services, health care, a um, paralegal. So when people come to our office and they need help, we can actually provide them real help. And that is my goal as a congressperson. We have 500 plus Congress people in Washington, but District 8 will only have one congressperson. And when we make those connections in the community, 
uh, up and down the ballot with local offices and the federal, the local, the community, we can make change. We can do it together. And I know, and you know, that when we do that and when we cooperate, that that change is possible. And so I'm really excited and this journey has been difficult but amazing. I've met so many incredible people. And I want to thank Samantha Nazario who came here with me tonight to uh, be my plus one. She's helped me uh, meet a lot of people tonight and I thank her for that so much. Anyway, I'm going to uh, let you go, but uh, thank you again and have a great evening. Si se puede. Thank you so much. Now we'll have John Terry, Congressional District 8. And then we will have the candidates for the state uh, legislature. So if you're a candidate for state legislature, please be on the lookout. John Terry. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for having me tonight. My name is Joanne Terry. I am also a candidate for United States Congress District 8. I am a retired satellite systems engineer. I, I volunteered on the board of the League of Women Voters. And um, I've lived in the Satellite Beach area for about 18 years. And I don't know about all of you, but I am really tired of the anger and the hate in our politics and in our neighborhoods. It is destroying our districts. It is destroying, it is, it is contributing to the mental health crisis and it's keeping us from being able to really address our most urgent problems, like cleaning up the Indian River Lagoon, like making sure that our residents have an affordable place to live, uh, an affordable place to, to live. So, the the slogan for my campaign is "Let's be neighbors again." Because when I first moved here to Florida in 2004, people were friendly to each other, and now with our politics, we don't even hardly look at each other unless we know what political party we belong to, and we cannot get anything done if we keep going this way. So I know that I can unite District 8 and bring all of the swing voters together this year to finally say, enough. Let's stop the madness and let's get some stuff done. We must clean up the Indian River Lagoon. We must address climate change. We must make sure that our explosive economic growth doesn't destroy our environment and leave our residents behind. I am getting such good feedback, and I'm really excited. And so on your August 23rd primary ballot for District 8, please vote for Joanne Terry so that we can be neighbors again. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. And before we move uh, to the state legislature races, we actually have a couple of more congressional candidates here. Congressional candidate for District 10, uh, Mr. Alan Grayson. Congressman Grayson here, uh, running for election in District 10, uh, which is North Orange County. Uh, Barack Obama said that I was an outstanding congressman. And I want to try to explain to you what he meant by that. Uh, when I was in Congress a few years ago, uh, each year, uh, all, all week long, uh, the, 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 the leadership would put out the bills for us to vote on on Friday nights. So week after week after week, we would not know what we were voting on until it was released on Friday night. And we had to put in our amendments by Monday morning. In fact, they were due before noon. If you didn't get in your amendment, nothing happened. You couldn't get a vote. Now, what I did was I worked with the staff every weekend to screen the bills over the weekend and find out if there was anything in them that was unfair to Puerto Rico. What do I mean by that? In many cases, the bills would say, this bill applies only to the 50 states, but not to Puerto Rico, not to Guam, not to any other territory, not to the Commonwealth. So my staff and I would work over the weekends, every weekend, to review the bills, and if there was a need, to put an amendment in, in order to make the bill fair to Puerto Rico. Now think about that, I was representing Orlando, but still, I wanted to make sure that things were fair for Puerto Rico. The resident commissioner couldn't do that. He wasn't allowed to put in amendments. Only we could do that. Now think about that. 
435 members of Congress, and only one of them was trying to make sure that the bills were fair to Puerto Rico. And that one of them was me. In addition to that, we got the first earmarks in the entire history of Central Florida for the Hispanic community. We got money to train businessmen in Spanish to be businessmen here in our community. The government paid for that. That was an earmark. Time after time after time, we were able to bring money into the community, into the Spanish-speaking part of the community. I'll give you another example. A 50% increase in housing advice by the government, housing advice in Spanish, how to keep your home, how to find a place to rent. That was in Spanish, and I got a 50% increase in that. I brought NACA, a national organization, to Orlando, created an event with Congressman Corin Brown, and together we offered 0% financing for homes. Now what people want in a congressman, what they need is somebody who's gonna get good things for them. And in that regard, my record is unequaled by anyone, not only here, but anywhere in the country. So I ask for your support, Alan Grayson for Congress. Thank you so much, Mr. Grayson, and now we'll have the Lynn Munir, uh, who will end and close our congressional candidates. Buenas noches. My name is Khalid Munir, and I'm originally from Pakistan. So, like most of you, I'm a minority here, and I grew up there. I've been a Central Florida resident for the last 30 years. I'm a business leader and a community leader. And my relations with the Hispanic community go a long way. In 2015, I was awarded the Leadership, the Leadership Council Award, Latino Leadership Council Award, for helping the Latino small businesses uh, as they struggled uh, in those times. I've also been the co-chairman of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, the uh, ambassadors. So I have done a lot for the Latino communities here. Currently, I serve as the president of the Central Florida International Chamber of Commerce, and half of my board is Latino, because most of the, the businesses here, we try to encourage the Latinos to promote their businesses. My experience extends to 17 years in banking, and 30 years developing my own businesses right here in Central Florida. I'm not a politician, but a businessman. I lived through the 1970s, when the mortgage rates went up to 80%. And you had to pay 22% to borrow money to run business. I see the same scenario coming back again. So I, we have to be prepared for those times coming up. And I'm the best person to represent you in Washington because of my economic experience. And I actually want to have, I have solutions to those problems that are coming back. We have to make sure the bank in a healthy situation have their, what they call the stress test of regularly. So when the economy gets hit, as you know, we're already in a recession, that we have a policy where the banks don't tighten up, but rather lose their lending restriction so the small businesses don't go out of business. So on 23rd of August, in fact, the early voting starts on Monday. I look forward to your support and your vote so I can be your voice in Washington. Thank you so much, and I look forward to your work. Thank Marcos and Alianza for this uh, wonderful uh, event tonight and the great get-together and the opportunity to meet with other candidates as well as uh, with voters. It's been fantastic. So thank you very much, Marcos and Alianza. With so many uh, great candidates here tonight, let me be very, very brief. I just want to touch on it about three things. I believe in a woman's right and freedom to make her own decisions about her own body, her own health care, and her own future. There's no other option. For a better future, I will fight for women's rights. For a better future, I will fight for affordable health care for all Floridians. For a better future, I will fight for affordable housing. For a better future, I will fight for you. Early voting starts on Monday. 
So get out and vote. Check out my website at keenforflorida.com. Vote for Tom Keen for the Florida House, District 35. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. And now I'll welcome Mr. Richie Baga running for State House District 35. Good evening, everyone. My name is Rishi Baga. I'm a proud Democratic candidate for Florida House of Representatives, District 35. I'm an attorney. I'm a former prosecutor. I'm a small business owner. I'm a husband and a father. You can see my wife and son over there. <laughs> I am uh, an Orange County public school kid, and I'm a proud UCF Knight. My family is the American dream, um, and, and uh, being here today is particularly important. I actually grew up across the street. You see, my dad left India with $8 in his pocket. He was a trained biochemist, but he couldn't get a job here because he was Indian. And so he became a taxi cab driver. My mom became a bank clerk. They worked day and night and bought a 26 room roadside motel when I was a kid. When I was 10, we moved here to Orlando, Florida. My dad took everything he had, sold it, and leased the days in across the street. We didn't have enough money left to live in a house, so we lived in that hotel for seven years. From the time I was 10 to 17, a school bus picked me up outside that motel, and I went to school. So I'm proud of the opportunities I've had. I'm proud of what my family's been able to do, and I want to make sure that those opportunities are available to everybody. When I became a prosecutor, I was a prosecutor in domestic violence cases and made sure that victims of domestic violence were talked to, were spoken to, and got the justice they deserved. As an attorney, I've represented both small clients all the way up to large corporations. As a small business owner, I understand what it means to work together. My family and I still own and operate a hotel today and work together almost every day. I'm running because I believe that we need a Florida that elects new leadership. We need new leaders in the state. We need to bring opportunity to the state. And the best way we can do that is by investing in our education, by making sure that we fully fund public schools, making sure that we extend healthcare to everybody, we expand Medicaid, which is gonna cover a million more Floridians. I'm running because I strongly believe that we need public safety regulations and we need to work hard to ban assault rifles in the state and we need to have more public safety when it comes to guns. We need to have safe storage laws. I'm running today to be the future leadership in this state. And so I ask for your support and I ask you to learn more about me. Go to rishibaga.com, my uh, booth is over there. You can learn all about me and I greatly appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Baga. Somebody left their glasses in the restroom, so if you're missing a pair of eyes, come to me. Uh, next, have Tatiana Chafin running for State House District 35. Hola, buenas noches. Uh, buenas noches mi gente, eh, quiero saludarlos primeramente a todos y gracias por venir esta noche, eh, se les agradece de todo corazón, gracias igual a la Alianza y a todos los otros representantes y candidatos que han venido esta noche a dejarles saber a la gente cuál es la plataforma de Dios. Mi nombre es Taitiana Muñoz Chafin, la mayoría de la gente me dice T, yeah. y yo nací en México con mis padres, mis padres decidieron emigrar a Estados Unidos para una mejor vida, ya saben, el sueño americano que es venir a Estados Unidos y ganar un poquito de dinero, hacer una mejor vida para todos nosotros. Cuando mis padres llegaron a Estados Unidos fue un poquito difícil, en los 80 s en los 90s, en el, el estado de California, East LA, si alguno de ustedes saben de East LA. <laughs> yeah, drive-by shootings, that's normal. Well, it was normal back then, so. Um, después de ahí, ellos, este, bueno, eh, empezaron a, a abrir su propio negocio que era vender fruta, eh, hot dogs, en una esquina y muy orgullosamente ellos pudieron comprar su hogar en ese tiempo, mandarnos a la escuela, obviamente desde pequeña ya saben los hijos, de, los hijos latinos siempre van con los padres a donde ellos vayan, van los hijos, ¿verdad? Entonces so, desde una tem temprana edad, y a mí me enseñaron a trabajar duro, a, a respetar mis autoridades, a respetar a la gente mayor 
y obviamente tener un respeto a lo que es trabajar fuerte para lo que uno quiere. Eso se tradujo cuando nosotros eh, nos volvimos a Norte de Carolina y yo tuve el privilegio de entrar a la Academia de Policía. Serví de policía aproximadamente nueve años en el estado del Norte de Carolina y cuando mi esposo fue este, dice, um, deployed to Afghanistan, nos movimos para Florida desde el 2011. Y ha sido un privilegio uno no vivir aquí en Florida y ahora, eh, a causa de todo lo que hemos visto con las políticas en el Estado, el, la, el crecimiento que ha tenido el Distrito 35, que ahora es parte de Aceola, parte de Orange County, todo lo que es el lado este de Orange County, nosotros somos uno de los condados que han crecido lo más rápido en el Estado de Florida. Pero también somos el condado que tiene los taxes más altos los taxes altos en gasolina, los taxes altos en propiedad privada. Y bueno, necesitamos un poco de cambio, ¿no? Necesitamos un poco de, de alivio. La gente trabajadora no tiene suficiente dinero para tener una sola persona trabajando en casa. Necesitan dos, a veces tres personas para poder sobrevivir. No solamente para vivir cómodos, sino para sobrevivir. Entonces, si ustedes quieren un cambio, quieren algo nuevo, les pido su soporte y su voto empezando el lunes. Tatiana Chapin, para el Distrito 35. Gracias. Thank you so much, Tatiana. Now we'll welcome uh, running for District 41, Chan Rose. Uh, District 41. Good evening, everyone. I am Shaniqua Shan Rose, and I'm running for state representative in District 41, which is everything West Orlando. I wasn't expecting to speak today, so thank you, Alianza, for letting me speak. Um, I have one mission and goal for District 41 and when I go to Tallahassee, and that's to build bridges, to close the gaps, to create a safer community for everyone. There are a lot of community issues that we have here. Um, we have violence, or gun violence in the school. We have uh, our students' education being interrupted with legislators. It's time for a strong voice and fight here. 11 years ago yesterday, my husband was shot and killed, uh, probably about five miles from here. And I've taken my pain to bring change to Orlando. Um, as a former City of Orlando employee, I work with the Nighttime Economy Study so that we can bring a safer community in downtown Orlando. And we saw last weekend where seven people were injured with, by gunfire that there's a lot of work to do. I am running not just for a title, not just for a paycheck, but we need a strong voice for our future. I'm raising a seven-year-old in the Paramount community. Your Yavaldi shooting happened on Tuesday. Wednesday we woke up two streets over, two people were shot, and when interviewed by the news station, the homeowner said, oh, I just went back to sleep, that's normal behavior. We can't continue with the status quo in West Orlando and expect that things are gonna change. We've seen the same leadership over and over, and it's time for something new in District 41, which is West Orlando, everything north of Sand Lake to Colonial, everything west of I-4 to the Ocoee area, Again, if you are if you live in the area, www.voteforshannon.com. I look for your support, and I thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you so much. And now we'll go to District 42, uh, Ms. Anna Escamani. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am so honored that I get to share space with everyone tonight. Again, my name is Ana V. Escamani, and I'm so proud to serve District 47, soon to be 42, in the Florida legislature. And I was first elected in 2018 as a, as a first time candidate, flipping a seat from red to blue and keeping it in 2020. Winning over the support of a bipartisan coalition of constituents because as you heard from other candidates here tonight, we focus on the needs of everyday people. Whether it's affordable housing, the rising cost of rent, clean air, clean water, ensuring that we are paying our teachers a wage they can actually live on so we don't have these major teacher shortages, opening up access to health care so folks don't go into debt when they get sick, and of course on top of all of that, uh, public transportation, community safety, 
and, and holding corporations accountable. I'm very big on tax structure and trying to put money back to the hands of everyday people, which is why uh, this past year we were able to secure a one-year tax break on children's diapers. But that's not enough. That's important, but it's not enough, especially when the biggest of corporations get major tax breaks and small businesses just can't get any break. And so we're really proud to do this work and to um, focus on solving problems versus creating problems. And of course, we know that the stakes are very high. Um, I just got back from South Florida where I was at the Board of Medicine hearing fighting for the needs of LGBTQ plus kids in our state. And before I ran for office, I worked at Planned Parenthood and I am unapologetically brave and bold when it comes to reproductive freedom. And I will say that no matter what your perspective is on ending a pregnancy, it is personal and private. And she made between that woman, her family, her daughter, and her faith, and not politicians. And we will always hold that line, especially as we see political leaders take away that freedom from us. To everyone for being here. We have so much work to do, especially when it comes to our diverse community. I, we need to see more bilingual resources and testing in our schools, especially for all of our refugees that are coming from Venezuela and other countries in South America. We have to help our students be successful and not set an uneven playing field where they just cannot compete. And those are bipartisan initiatives we can pursue if we elect the right people to office the lead. So thank you so much for having me, and uh, make sure you check out honorforflorida.com, and of course vote in the uh, no, August elections and November, y'all. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And now we'll have uh, from District 43, Mr. Jay Rodriguez running for the State House, District 43. I do apologize, sir. Um, I am a good Puerto Rican, and if I do not cede my, my space to Joanna Lopez, who is a woman, I think my, my mom will, would slap me. So I, would, I offer my, my time to her, and then I'll, I'll speak after her. I am, so, I am so sorry. This is the program, and, and it's your turn. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. My name is JJ Rodriguez. Glory be to God. My motto is God and state, and I have to say something. I'm pro-life, and I'm unequivocally pro-life, but I'm also a person that respects privacy. So I would like to say that if I do get to Tallahassee, I will never pass a law that will force anybody, women or men, to do anything that they w do not want to do. I'm against mandates. So I will never obligate a woman to do, or a man to do anything that they don't want. Yo soy nacido en Trujillo Alto, Puerto Rico. I was born in Trujillo Alto, Puerto Rico. I came to uh, uh, Orlando via Ponce. So Ponce, Ponce, I have the parking, so we're here in the parking lot. So hey, only Ponce has know this joke, so if you know this joke, hey, you, one of the favorites. We came here in 1995 with my wife, a suitcase, a Nintendo, and a TV. Yes, I am a gamer. Um, I started a company called Bilingual Broadcasting Network. Dani Ramos was one of my oldest friends who knows me since uh, 1995. Um, I've been a business owner for that time. Um, it's a small business and I like it. I'm running because I feel that the district is underserved. And let me get to a couple of points. Um, in education, if you know what junior achievement is, we need more junior achievement program styles of that program in schools. We also need to bring music. We need to bring arts. Where are we? We're in the gallery. We need to bring arts. We need to bring music. If students want to learn how to make a movie, we gotta teach them how to make a movie. If they want to learn how to fix an air conditioner, we, we gotta fix them. We have a shortage of teachers. Well, if you stay five years under my plan when I get to Tallahassee, the state will pay for your student loan. I think that that's something that we need to do. We need to take care of our professionals that stay in the state who will pay for your student loan. One thing that we need to do is we need to also lo lower our tolls. How many here, raise your hands, do you feel that Orlando is, has too many tolls? Raise your hands. No? You think that, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I want to lower the tolls 50, 50 cents. Um, our healthcare savings accounts, we want to make them permanent. 
We want to make them tax-free. If you want to learn more about me, jj443.com. Thank you very much. Que Dios me lo bendiga, motivado, contento y enchulado de la vida. Thank you so much, Mr. Rodriguez, and I will welcome Ms. Joanna Lopez. Buenas tardes, buenas noches, no sé la hora que es. Buenas tardes, good evening. Um, it is a pleasure for me being here. Um, thank you to Alianza, uh, to Sulma, the Executive um, Director of Alianza Center, and also um, to Marcos, the Executive Director of Alianza for Progress. So, estoy muy honrada de estar aquí esta noche con todos ustedes. I am pro-choice. I am pro LGBTQ, I am plus, and I am pro labor. I am pro diversity, inclusion, equity. Estoy a favor, obviamente, de los derechos de la mujer. Es absurdo que vengan hombres a decidir por nosotros e imponer leyes que realmente no le compete a ellos. Es nuestro cuerpo y nosotras somos las que tenemos el poder sobre nuestro cuerpo. Why I'm running? I'm running because I am so tired of the preemption from the governor. I refuse to create policies as a school board member in Orange County Public School that is legalizing the bullying in our students. In our students. So, estoy demasiado, ya estoy alta, estoy drained uh, by the preemptions por las órdenes ejecutivas del gobernador y creo que ya es hora de que vaya a Tallahassee porque no estoy dispuesta a crear políticas que estén legalizando el bullying en contra de nuestros estudiantes y de nuestras comunidades de color. Preemptions that are against our diversity. Preemptions that are against our communities of color. Enough is enough. Y por eso estoy corriendo ahora mismo para ser eh, un representante por el Distrito 43. Así que mi estancia en la Junta Escolar ya eh, está hecha. Eh, he hecho bastante en la Junta Escolar. Eh, admiro a todas esas personas. I admire everybody that is running for school board. It is very difficult because at this moment we're losing authority at a local level. Así que los admiro mucho porque estamos perdiendo poder, pero basta ya. Estoy corriendo para representar mi comunidad. Y obviamente vine aquí en el 98, soy boricua, I am boricua, but I am here to represent all, all, everybody, the diverse, the diverse community. So, que no que quede claro que aunque soy puertorriqueña, estoy representando toda la comunidad. Así que basta ya. Nuestro, our senior citizens deserve better. Our working families deserve better. Our business owners deserve better. And this is not about politics, but we have to be clear. We have to be clear in our point and in our vision. I am not negotiating my point of view on being pro-choice and be inclusive. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Joanna Lopez. And now we we'll welcome, running for District 44, Ms. Jennifer Rita Harris. Good evening, everybody. My name is Jennifer Rita Harris, and I am running for beautiful District 44, where we are standing right now. Yeah, give a hand for this awesome community. So District 44 goes from Lake Nona all the way across to Dr. Phillips, uh, Sand Lake down to the Osceola border, give or take a few miles around uh, Universal. I have lived in the community for almost 20 years. It is the longest I've ever spent in one place. We moved around a lot when I was a child. Um, this community has become my home. The people who live here have become my family. I love it here and I, and I want to go to Tallahassee to represent us. Um, my first job was at Planned Parenthood when I was there. Yes, let's give it up. So my first job was at Planned Parenthood, and what I did was I advocated for my peer group. I was a peer counselor. We performed skits on things like domestic violence, drunk driving, and safe sex. Uh, we went out to schools to teach kids how to be safe and how to take care and how to advocate for themselves. And I brought that with me my whole life. I brought that compassion and that desire to work and to fight with me my whole life. And to be honest with you, the leadership that we've had in this district has been absent. And one thing that I'm going to say is that for far too long, this district has not had someone fighting for it. I am a fighter. I want to go up to Tallahassee, and I want to represent us. I want to fight for us. I want to make sure that everybody has an equitable opportunity in this state. I have gone to the school boards. Uh, Johanna is correct. It has been very difficult to be a school board member this year. People have been in there yelling at them about everything from masks to books. Um, and I want to go up to Tallahassee to push back against that. I am also unapologetically pro-choice. 
I am pro LGBTQIA. I am pro immigrant. I am pro worker. I am pro family. I am pro our right to live a happy, prosperous life and be healthy and live our lives in Florida. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Harris. And now we'll welcome to running for our State House District 27, Mr. Anthony Nieves. Hi, good evening. My name is Anthony Nieves, and I am a candidate for the Democratic primaries, House District 47, which encompasses all of St. Cloud, Buenaventura Lakes, Florida, and a sliver of Orange County south of 417. I am an 18-year resident of Florida. I've been a 15-year resident of Osceola County. And what I've seen is not what was promised to me when I moved here from New York City in 2004. As a New York-born Puerto Rican, I was very much involved my entire life in the civil rights movement, from being perched on my father's shoulders, labor movement, the LGTB movement, from Stonewall Inn to anything that involves you know, our marginalized communities. So I come to Florida, and the first thing I do when I drive into Florida is I ask to inspect. I wanted to get a vehicle inspection for the emissions, and they tell me, oh, we don't do that here. What do you mean you don't do vehicle inspections here? Emissions inspections. This is Florida. You, you promote the, you know, the, the, the natural wildlife. So I knew something was wrong. Then I see the astronomically high amount of MPAs that we have that need to change. If you're an MPA, you are shortchanging yourself of your democratic you know, fulfillment in that sense. You're not being, you're not voting in the primaries. House District 47 has gone through many changes. We see the traffic is out of control. There's no affordable housing. The public transportation system is terrible. You have St. Cloud with a population of over 60,000 people and there's one Lynx bus route, Route 10. There's one bus route for an entire city with an exploding and growing population. Changes need to be made. We have no emergency shelter system. Without a divert, we don't even have a diversion center uh, for homeless services in, in Osceola County. We lack affordable housing, and that's something that needs to change. I propose that we need someone that is gonna be representative of the people, that is a lifelong Democrat, lifelong Democrat. In my race, it's a primary race, lifelong Democrat. And someone who's gonna represent our party and our people the way it should be. We've had one party control for a quarter century, from the governor's mansion to super majorities in the state house and state senate, as well as a majority of our elected officials that are judges. That needs to change, and I hope to bring that change to the people of House District 47. I ask you, if you have not given us a shot to look at, check out nevisforflorida.com. That site has been on for three years for the people so that you can reach me, and so that we can mobilize, organize, and take back our community. Our motto is, vote Nieves for Florida, returning all power back to the people. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Mr. Nieves. And to close out our state legislature candidates, we, we're going to have Mr. Victor Torres, but he's unfortunately sick at the moment, so he has sent one of his advisors, Mr. Ad Yorskin, speaking on behalf of Senator Victor Torres for Senate District 50, uh, 25. Good evening, how's everybody doing? I know it's getting late, but you can do better. How is everybody doing? Thank you. Uh, my name is Al Yorston. I am here for Senator Torres. He's got bronchitis, he's home recovering, he's doing fine, but he wishes he could be here with you tonight. And I know that uh, many of you have worked with either Senator Torres over the last decade or know him personally. So he's sorry he can't be here with you. But if he was here tonight, he would tell you that he's been a lifelong public servant. He served the people of Central Florida for the last decade in both the Florida House and in the Florida Senate. And every day he is working to protect uh, working families, young people in our community, seniors and veterans because quite frankly, people are struggling to keep a roof over their head, to put food on their family's table, and to put gas in their tanks to get back and forth to work. So Senator Torres is a strong advocate for his community, and we're asking for your vote this November, and I promise you, if you pass your vote for Senator Torres, 
when you return him to the Florida Senate in Tallahassee, he will cast his votes for you. So thank you very much. Elect Victor Torres, Florida Senator, District 25. Thank you so much, Mr. Houston. Now we will hear from Orange County Commission candidate um, for District 6, Cynthia Harris. Good evening, everyone. My name is Cynthia Harris, and I am your candidate for Orange County Commissioner for District 6. A lot of people ask me why in the world would I want this job? And the reason I tell them is because you need someone who's ready to lead in this community on day one. We deserve better leadership than what we've had for the last 20 years, which was pretty much nothing. I'm not in this race for a paycheck or to pad my resume. I'm in here because I care about my community. I live in my community, I work in my community, and I play in my community. I stand for housing. Did you know that Orange County has 5,118 houses in their inventory? But they said that they want to make sure that we have affordable housing. Well, I say if you let go some of that inventory and give it to working class people who can afford it, because you are in the real estate business and you can hold the mortgage because you obtained the property, whether you obtained it through collecting taxes, code enforcement liens, you have that property in your in inventory. If you live in municipalities, municipalities have the same real estate. City of Orlando had 1,178 properties in their inventory that they can release to the people in this community. So when we're talking about affordable housing, we can start with our slumlords, the city and county governments. They are holding the keys to our future. We cannot afford to wait 10 years for them to build affordable housing for us when they already have the keys to the city and to the county already in the palm of their hands. And we must hold them accountable. I'm Cynthia Harris, and I stand for transportation. When I was a kid, the buses ran every 30 minutes, and they were still broken down. Now they run every hour, and it's still broken down. Families have to spend five hours to be on that bus every day to go to work, taking time, precious time from their families, only to go to a job that only give you four hours of time to work. Is that right? No, it's not. We have to do better, and we have to hold our government accountable for the things that they're doing to us. We only get these things done to us because we allow them. You need a candidate that's going to fight for you, that's going to stand for you, because I am one of you. I am not the status quo. I am your candidate for Orange County Commissioner for District 6. My name is Cynthia Harris, electcynthiaharris.com. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, you name it, you can find me. I'll be happy to talk to you after this. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Harris. Um, can I please now have the United States Senate um, candidates come on to the stage, please? We're going to go ahead and start with Dennis and Siegel. You can go on to the stage. Buenas tardes, mi gente. Uh, mi nombre es Denny Misigoy y yo soy el, el candidato libertario para el Senado de los Estados Unidos este noviembre. Uh, si quieren más de la historia de mi vida, te pido por favor agarren unas tarjetas que tengo ahí en la mesa, ahí mismo. Uh, pero prefiero explicar lo que me separa de los otros candidatos. Um, the National Defense Authorization Act for this year uh, authorized. 762 billion uh, to be spent on defense and military. Uh, both Michael Rubio and Val Demings both voted for it. Coming up this year, the, the, for this fiscal year, the National Defense Authorization Act is about uh, floating around at around over 840 billion. This is money being taken out of our communities to be spent abroad 
on mostly blowing up brown people on the other side of the world, like we see in the conflict in Yemen, a war of genocide that the US has been supporting for more than seven years, uh, and all to enrich the military industrial complex. In addition, uh, officially, inflation today is around eight or nine percent. But all of us who are living day to day, we're, we know we're paying a lot more than that, the prices for our gas and for our food. And this is a predictable consequence of the monetary system we have, where the Federal Reserve creates money out of nothing so that Congress can spend irresponsibly and also to bail out the big businesses that are irresponsible on their own. And this is a system, again, that is supported by Marco Rubio and Val Demings, the two big party, not officially on, on the Democratic side yet, but that's what we expect. But that's what you get from the status quo. I'm the only candidate here on both of those issues who's committed to voting no on the crazy spending overseas and the vain pursuit of empire and blowing up people in countries who've never done anything to us. I'm the only one who's willing to go against the current monetary system to end the Federal Reserve, to give people the opportunity for sound money through monetary freedom, give people an option. I believe every person deserves a dollar that is worth as much tomorrow as it was when you earned it yesterday. None of us should be subject to these kind of problems and there's so many other issues that draw a stark contrast between me and what you get from the establishment. What we've had, and this is how we got here, 30 trillion in debt, eight or 9% inflation, how much further do we wanna go? So I ask you guys come check out the table, talk to me a little bit later, thank you. Thank you so much, Dennis. Um, if William Sanchez is not here with us tonight, oh, um, this is Sarah who's going to be speaking on William's behalf. Thank you so much. Good evening. Oops, sorry. Uh, my name is Dr. Ivan Graham. I'm the chief of staff for William Sanchez, who's running for U.S. Senate. Everything that I've heard from most of the candidates, not going to repeat all that. It's late. I'm wearing this suit and I'm hot. But I will say. It is my opinion, it is both of our opinions, mine and um, Attorney Sanchez, that it's time for someone to say the quiet things out loud. For example, if a woman is denied any access to legal health care, that is inhumane. It's not just wrong, it's not inconvenient, it's inhumane to deny a woman access to health care, for example. And again, I'm not going to have a whole big spiel, but William Sanchez, is the progressive candidate for U.S. Senate. And I believe, we believe, that it's time for someone to say the quiet things out loud and to stand up for the things that we all believe that we should have in this state. So, again, thank you, and thank you for your time. General for the state of Florida. You know, we're, we're watching some, a lot of dictatorial behavior from our governor, and the one person who can and will stop that is the Attorney General. See, the Attorney General protects our constitutional rights. The Attorney General is supposed to be the one who ensures that when we're talking about the right to privacy for women, that we are fighting for that and protecting it. When we're talking about ways that we teach people in school and, and educate children, and we're not using language in, in the Constitution that violates those teachers' freedom to teach. We want to be able to have kids learn and not being indoctrinated. And that is part of the Attorney General's job and position. I am also running to make certain that we provide public safety much more than just the mass incarceration of black, brown, and poor people. Black people and Latinos have a real serious issue when it comes to the criminal justice system. And finally, we have to make an economy that works for everyone. I want to make certain that we are comfortable in our homes. When, we are, when there's small businesses, they are supported. When we have fraudulent behavior, they are investigated. Those are the reasons that I'm running for attorney general. And having served this community as state attorney, I'm certainly ready for the move. I'm ready to represent.
represent you. I ask, you, I ask for your vote on August 23rd, and I would love for you to make a contribution to the campaign. Spread the word, aramisayala.com. Please follow me on Twitter at aramisayalafl or Instagram or Facebook. Thank you all very much. It's time for a change.